The Rise of the Illuminati Adam Weishaupt, a Bavarian professor of canon law, started the Radical Illuminati Secret Society in Europe in 1776 when he was 28 years old. Anti-clerical and anti-royal, the Illuminati aimed to infiltrate and upset powerful institutions. They created a plan for the global subversion of church, state, royalty, and society. Weishaupt aimed to abolish all religions and obliterate every government so mankind could live happily in a world of equality. He foresaw the economy operating under a communism of good structure overseen by an enlightened, illuminated, elite over which he presided. Biden was actually sworn in using a family heirloom, a Douay Reims Bible used by Roman Catholics worldwide. Jay-Z calls stories about his Illuminati membership stupid. Kanye West thinks they are ridiculous and Katy Perry told Rolling Stone the theory was the preserve of weird people on the internet. But then, the secret of Illuminati would say that, wouldn't they? The order was represented by the Owl of Minerva, which in Greek mythology traditionally accompanies Athena the virgin goddess of wisdom. Another Illuminati emblem was a dot within a circle that symbolized the all-seeing eye which belonged not to God, but to a superior Illuminati watching over the lower ranks. The Illuminati Spy Structure The Illuminati adopted antique codenames to avoid identification. Weishaupt was Brother Spartacus, named after the gladiator who headed the insurrection of slaves and kept Rome in terror for three years. Weishaupt aimed to find young zealots, using Freemason lodges as a recruiting ground, and knit them together with secrecy. Initially, anyone over 30 wasn't trusted. The lower ranks were divided into hierarchies of novices, minervals, and illuminated minervals, and divided into cells. Weishaupt acted as their spymaster. When he could not persuade them by his own firmness, he employed Jesuitical tricks, causing them to fall out with each other, setting them as spies on each other, and separating any two that he saw attached to each other, by making the one a master of the other, and, in short, he left nothing undone that could secure his uncontrolled command, according to John Robison, author of Proofs of a Conspiracy. Recruits had to supply the names of their ancestors, relations, friends, correspondents, and enemies. They were asked to recommend appropriate people to be received into the order and to list those who might be unfit, justifying reasons for both opinions. They were told to pay attention to the conduct of other men around them and report back weekly about public or private occurrences. The Threat of Death after three years of one-on-one -on -one study with their Illuminati tutor, recruits were asked to sign an oath to uphold the society's goals upon the punishment of death. A drawn sword is then pointed at his breast, and he is asked, will you be obedient to the commands of your superiors? He is threatened with unavoidable vengeance, from which no potentate, monarch slash ruler, can defend him if he should ever betray the order, Robison said. Plans were underway for two sisterhoods, he added, both subservient to male Illuminati, one sisterhood made up of women of virtue, the other of women, who fly out of the common track of prudish manners. Neither sisterhood was to know about the other. The Power of the Illuminati The Barbarian Illuminati insinuated themselves into public offices and courts of justice. Estimates about the group size vary greatly. Some put the figure at 650, others at 2,500, but, eventually, the secret society was exposed and persecuted.